In this lesson we're going to focus on our blog and continue what we started in the previous lesson by creating more interesting content that is likely to generate backlinks to our website. So before we get started with the blog articles, I have in preparation for this lesson added our banner extra content area here. And if you remember from the keyword research lesson, we decided we would also focus on barista training and coffee training courses. So I've tried to get a few of those keywords into not only the title here, but also the supporting text underneath. And before we go any further, we're using the built-in blog plugin that ships with RapidWeaver. So to add this extra content area, I've had to place some code inside of the header tab in the page inspector and then the body tab here. You might need to add the extra content area in a different way if you're using another blogging system. Okay, with that being said, let's start focusing on our blog articles. So we have three currently. Firstly, do you have a milk allergy, brewing course, and espresso? We're going to have a look especially at the titles to make them more interesting and include some keywords. And then I'll give you a couple of tips for the actual content of your blog posts as well. So let's get started by going to the edit mode and focusing on the do you have a milk allergy blog post. And you might well be thinking that do you have a milk allergy is a perfectly fine title. However, when you dig a little bit deeper, it could be a lot better. Firstly, it's not really using any keywords. And secondly, we're not really describing the content in the blog post. And thirdly, no one is going to be searching for do you have a milk allergy in Google. So what you need to do when you're creating your blog posts and especially with the title is think about the keywords and the phrases that someone might search for. And what we're really talking about here is people with a milk allergy, they probably want to know what the top alternatives to milk is for their coffees. So a better worded title for this post would be the top five alternatives to milk in coffee. So this is a much better title for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we've got some keywords, we've got coffee, and alternatives and that's likely to be a search term that someone uses they want to find out an alternative or a replacement to milk in coffee secondly it also describes the content in this post and if you're unsure of what to post about writing a blog post title like this could give you some ideas because now we know we're going to tell the visitor what the top five alternatives to milk are for their coffee so that gives you your blog post content automatically. You don't need to worry about what you're writing about. And thirdly, when you share this link on social media or you email it to your visitors or someone sees the URL, they instantly know what they're going to be reading about. So try and keep those things in mind when you're creating a blog post. So before we move on to the next one, we need to make sure we update our permalink. And I'm going to set it as top five alternatives milk coffee. And as I mentioned in a previous episode, we don't need to include all of those joining words. So such as the, to, and in. Those aren't going to gain us anything with regards to SEO. They're going to make the URL longer, harder to read, and not give any benefit with regards to describing the blog post content. Okay, so next one is brewing course. Again, you might be thinking this is a perfectly good blog post title. You're telling your visitors that you have a brewing course available. But again, this isn't very targeted to what is going to be entered into search engines. We need something a little bit more specific and descriptive. And again, if you remember from the keyword research lesson, we found that coffee training courses or barista training courses was quite a popular search term. So we're going to be focusing on those keywords in this title. So I'm going to change it from brewing course to barista training courses in Brighton. This is a lot better because we're not just saying brewing course, we're using some keywords and we're describing what's in the blog post. And actually on that, and actually, on that thought, we could actually say sign up for our barista training courses in Brighton. Like so. That's a little bit more descriptive. Perhaps it's quite long, but I do think that maybe that is going to describe the content of the post a little bit better. And again, we should not forget to update the permalink. And in here, we could just call this barista training courses Brighton. We don't need to include those joining words. We can just use the main keywords that describe the page content. And I think barista training courses Brighton does that perfectly. Okay, and then finally, let's just have a look at the espresso blog post title. This is probably the weakest blog post title that we had. But again, I've seen a lot of posts. I've seen a lot of blogs that do this. They just put one word as the title, doesn't describe it, doesn't use keywords, doesn't tell you what you're gonna find out about. And what this post is actually all about is how to pull the perfect shot of espresso. And if we think about some of those training keywords, we could say 
learn how to pull the perfect shot of espresso. Again, that's a lot more descriptive and we're also getting a couple of keywords in there. So learn and how to, those are the types of phrases that people are going to be entering into search engines. You know, they want to find out how to do something. I want to learn something. And this is what we want to do with our blog articles. Provide interesting content that is likely to generate some backlinks for us. So once again, let's make sure we update our permalink. And I'm going to say how to pull perfect shot espresso. So let's go to preview and have a look and see what those titles look like. So here we can see that previously we were saying here, do you have a milk allergy? Now we're saying the top five alternatives to milk in coffee. You know exactly what this post is going to be about. And it's using a couple of keywords that we want to be found for. Then we have sign up for our barista training courses in Brighton. Again, that sounds a lot more interesting and it is describing what we want the user to do on this post or what they're going to find out about on this post. And, of course, we're using a couple of those keywords that we want to be found for, barista training courses and Brighton. And finally, rather than just simply espresso, we're saying learn how to pull the perfect shot of espresso. And I keep drilling this in, but we're describing the blog post content and we're using keywords in the title. So how to perfect shot espresso these are all likely types of keywords and phrases that people are going to be entering into search engines okay so that is how you can create interesting and seo friendly blog post titles next let's have a quick look at some of the content tweaks that we could make to our posts so actually let me just show you this first article post in preview so we can get a good idea of how it looks like so this is a pretty standard blog post. There's a lot of text, there's some headings, there's a list of stuff. Your post might well have a couple of images, stuff like that. But what you want to be doing when you're writing your blog post is dividing up the posts into sections in the same way we have done with the other pages on our website. So each section of our post should have a subheading, so an H2, and use some of those keywords and describe the content underneath that heading. So for example here, we have a heading here. Obviously I've just got some boilerplate text in here. I can show you what that looks like actually. Let's go to edit and quickly edit that H2 here. So my favorite alternative to milk in coffee is Oatly. So we could be saying number one is Oatly coffee milk. And then obviously you would have some text that uh, describes Oatly. And then at the end of that text, we could link off to further information about Oatly. If we had, for example, a guide of how to steam Oatly milk correctly, or if you found a YouTube video that's really interesting about that, or you want to link off to Oatly's official website, any of those options would be good because not only do you want to generate inbound backlinks, you also want to be providing the user with links to further increase their knowledge about that subject that they want to know about. So linking off to other websites is not going to penalize you. Don't be afraid to link off to competitors or other people that are talking about the same subject. That's not going to harm you. If anything, it's probably going to benefit your website. So as we've done on, on the other page of our site, we could just say find out more about Oatly. And as I say, we could link that off. You, if you have a page on your site about that, you could do that or you can enter in the full URL. I don't know what their website is, but I'm guessing it's Oatly.com. And obviously you want to set a descriptive title as well. So we'll set the link there. So what I'm doing here is just reiterating as we've done with the other pages on our site, we want at the top a descriptive title using keywords and then throughout the blog post we want to separate the content into sections using subheadings and where possible you should put in some keywords into here as well and then you can also link off to further information about that subject and as I say don't be worried if that isn't a page on your website okay next up let's have a look at categories and tagging so go to edit mode and if you'll notice here we have uh, a categories field for each one of the posts and currently I've categorized this post under milk now personally I like to use either just categories or just tags not both of them I think they basically serve the same purpose so I would I would suggest that you choose either categories or tags not both and you can update that in the page inspector under the settings here so you can enable or disable the categories and the same with the tags. So I'm actually going to disable the tags because we're not going to be using those. 
Why categories or tagging is good is because it creates an index page of all of the posts under that category. And the reason that's good is because if you think about search engines, when they come to that page, so for example, milk, they are going to get all of the blog posts that are talking about milk on your website. And if milk is one of your search engine keywords that you're focusing on, that is going to be a great resource for search engines because they are going to say, oh, okay, this site has 50 articles talking about milk. And they're going to find those and it's got a keyword in the URL and it just generally builds up a picture of the type of information they can find out about on your site. So categorizing your posts into logical categories is important. Milk is a perfectly fine example of a category. If you're often talking about steaming milk, latte up, anything around different types of milk that you use in your cafe, you could categorize all those posts under milk. And then, as I say, you would get a, a category page that linked off with all those articles on there. And then if you see on the other posts, we've categorized both of those, we've categorized both of those under brewing. We might want to perhaps re categorize the sign up for our barista training courses. We probably want to say something like training. And then every time we talk about training on our blog, we can add that category and it will be added to the categories index page. And if you go to preview, I can show you those index pages actually. If we go down and have a look in the sidebar here, you'll see a list of all of our categories and actually archive pages, which we'll talk about in a second. But if we click on, for example, training, we'll get a, an index page, as I said, with the list of all of the training posts on our blog. And finally, just before we finish up, the archives that we saw in the sidebar there are generated automatically for you and you can disable them if you don't want them. I would suggest that you leave them enabled because it allows people to find your post by date in a very easy way. So you can also enable gaps and you can archive by week, month or year. Again, depending on the blog system that you're using, this might be slightly different, but I would, as I say, suggest that you have the archives enabled. So that just about does it for this lesson. In a future lesson, we're going to look at adding Twitter integration and Facebook integration and comments to our blog. But for now, let's publish these changes up to our live site and make sure we're still looking good. And we'll just visit that to ensure everything is okay and go to the blog. And as you can see, we've got our new titles and our new descriptive URLs as well. So hopefully this lesson has illustrated why a blog is a really good idea for your site and what sort of content you want to be posting on there and how to think about writing titles for each one of your posts. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.